Hey guys, uh, good evening. Am I visible and audible to everyone here? Uh, just drop a quick yes or a thumbs up if yes, and I am good to go. All right. So hi guys. Uh, so finally we are meeting for our first class of FMG images. Hi Vendan and uh, Meet and all the others who are joining in. So this is the first class of our series after a long time. <laughs> yes, very, very long indeed. After 60 long minutes, we are meeting. So uh, welcome back to one more special class. I don't know how many of you did see the earlier classes, but this is our officially the first class for FMG students after we did that planning the other day. So this will be a continuing series that we are starting. All right, where we will look at a lot of radiological images and we'll uh, try and figure our way out through them. OK, so that is the whole plan. Uh, any of you who are meeting me for the first time and don't know me, uh, my name is Zainab and I have uh, done my MBBS and MD in radiology from Ames. And I will uh, try and make radiology easy for you. And I will also try and uh, uh, integrate some other subjects while we are doing radiology so that your job becomes a bit more uh, easier. OK, so that is the whole aim in this particular first class while uh, others are joining in. Uh, we will be starting with neuro, something which is very, very important. So you will at least get one question. Yes, forever single, definitely ortho pada dungi. Ab kafi har class mein yehi comment, you keep copy pasting it. Kara dungi. Pehle radio pakka kar le, fir we will definitely start ortho. Okay, saath saath MSK radio mein, I will definitely make sure ki aapka ortho ho jayega. All right, so we will do uh, um, as much as possible. Uh, obs and gyni also, yes, yes. Okay, let's start. All right. So as as we had planned every Saturday, Sunday, so starting today, today is Sunday. So from next Saturday, Sunday, uh, we'll be having these classes. All right. Uh, every day. Uh, I mean, every Saturday, Sunday for two hours each. Okay. So that is the whole plan. <laughs> Patho micro. Pehle radio start. Karte, all right. So everybody's requesting for everything other than radiology. So let's start with this and then we'll try and put in extra things as the time permits. Okay. So pehle radio ko cover karenge, pakka karenge, and then we will have other subjects. Okay. So that is the whole plan because my main responsibility for you guys is to clear your radio first. And believe me, if your radio is strong, you will have subjects. Saat saat clear ho so if you can ask uh, uh, basically your uh, previous seniors who have given uh, uh, the exam last time, so uh, it really helps if this subject is strong, right? So that is what we will try and do. Uh, Shiva Shankar, uh, why multiple myeloma has a cold spot is your doubt? So remember, any uh, time, uh, so just everybody, uh, excuse me for like one minute. So on a bone scan, remember, we will have an uptake only when uh, there is any osteoblastic activity. Correct. That is what our bone scan is uh, testing, Shiva Shankar. So because in multiple myeloma, you don't really have any new bone forming. What is happening in multiple myeloma? In multiple myeloma, you have these cells, these plasma sites, which are proliferating in the bone marrow and they are growing. Correct. So basically, there is just no bone ka role. Bone is just getting lysed because of the infiltration of these plasma cells. So that is why these will appear as lytic lesions. Does it make sense? So that is why there is no hot spot. That is why there is only cold spot in multiple myeloma. And that also explains why the ALP levels are normal because no new bone is getting formed. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jamal and all the others. So now um, with this, shall we begin? Uh, so today's agenda, I will quickly tell you. Uh, before that, I'll tell you something about an academy. So uh, this is the plus subscription where you can take all the batches which are available. All right. A lot of you have signed up for an academy I had seen. So uh, you can join your focus FMG course where you will have a structured batch course for all the subjects. So you can do that if you are just starting out. And uh, this is the uh, code that you can use for subscription, which is ZVORA. You'll also need this for uh, unlocking the special class plan. So you can also use the same code, which is my name, ZVORA. Uh, keep interacting, guys. And uh, because we are starting out today, so this I will act. Uh, this will be like uh, the first class in a long series of classes. All right. So uh, be interactive. I will keep asking you questions. And you keep giving me answers and we'll have MCQs in between with uh, live polls. All right. So that is the whole uh, plan of action with this. Today's agenda, I will quickly tell you. So we are starting out with neuro. 
ठीक है सो वी विल सी अ फ्यू न्यूरो इमेजेस विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द वेरी वेरी बेसिक्स सो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हियर फील दैट यू डोंट नो एनी रेडियोलॉजी जस्ट टाइप इन अ यस सो दैट आई नो दैट i have to start from where is there anybody who feels that i don't know anything like this is the first time i'm studying radiology yes fine even one person says so a lot of people are saying yes see guys theek hai so we will be starting from the very very basics like what is right what is left what is hypodense what is hyperdense theek hai so that is where we'll be starting from and then we'll keep building our way up and finally before your exam in june i want that you at least reach 99 if not 100 okay so that is the whole plan so let's start with zero today and uh, take baby steps and uh, reach somewhere hopefully so this is a one hour ka class today it was planned as a two hour so let's uh, because i have had too many classes today i have uh, made this a one hour class all right and next time onwards from saturday sunday if you feel that one hour is fine we'll keep it one hour otherwise we make it two hours all right so we'll uh, be flexible with that theek hai so shuru karte hain enough uh, chatting done and uh, shun, shuru karte hain ab fine so these are the investigations theek hai we'll see one hour two hour we'll decide okay no issues so here i am showing you the basic radiological investigations which we use right so four basic radiological investigations try and identify them for me if possible what is this that i am showing you here so this is the first step where we identify investigations very very important correct so this is x ray one thing about x ray is it a 2d investigation is a 3d investigation do i take slices or it is just one image that i will get it's a 2d investigation correct it just gives me this one solitary isolated image which will uh, basically combine everything on the way so there'll be a superimposition of everything if i take a chest x ray my heart my ribs my scapula everything will be superimposed so one thing about x ray it's a 2d investigation second thing does it have radiation does it have radiation yes it does okay so x ray will have radiation it's a 2d investigation theek hai fair enough then x ray ka hi if i take a 3d brother who can give me slices who can give me coronal image who can give me sagittal image can i just say that this is x ray only but it's a 3d way i am taking x ray 360 degree mein such that i can get any plane that i want so what is that as all of you are correctly identifying this is a ct image so now when i ask you the question that does it have radiation it is x ray only in 3d way so it will also have radiation correct this also has radiation one more logical question for you will it have more radiation than x ray lesser radiation than x ray more it's a 360 degree x ray correct so this will have far more radiation than x ray so this is something we have established we have established it's a 3d investigation it can give me different different planes so now if i have another 3d image alongside x ray alongside ct what is this another 3d image that gives me slices correct this is mri this is mri now the golden question does it have radiation does mri have radiation why is mri so popular for no for somebody who doesn't know anything about radiology i'm sure you know that mri is very very good right mri is very good because it doesn't have any radiation and it is something which is very very expensive also yes so the one of the causes behind its expense is its mechanism that it is based on a magnetic field right it is based on creating a large magnet and then having our body produce signals so in this process we don't use any x ray we are using the protons in our body to generate signal so very very basic so remember no radiation no radiation with mri is it 3d yes it is 3d okay then coming to one investigation here what is this what is this here this is ultrasound perfect this is ultrasound one question for you is ultrasound uh, having radiation or no radiation with ultrasound again no radiation ultrasound uses what it doesn't use x ray it doesn't use magnetic field but it uses what it uses sound waves so can i hear the sound waves are there sound waves which fall in our auditory range can i hear those sound waves going through my body no not really so they are in what range they are in the ranges of megahertz all right so i use somewhere around 2 to 20 megahertz of sound waves which is far beyond our auditory field right we can't hear about 20000 so 2 to 20 megahertz that is why ultrasound will not make any noise so this is also no radiation and one more thing about this can i generate 3d images here 
yes here i just have to move my probe okay the in the direction that i move my probe i will get an image so this is also a 3d image perfect so out of these four investigations that we need to learn about what did we establish to have radiation x ray and uska 360 degree brother which is ct mri and ultrasound very good they do not have radiation is that fine so now coming to the main thing about today's agenda which is neuro right so whenever we talk about the brain remember the two main investigations we will be talking about will be ct here and mr these are the two main investigations which have a role as far as the brain is concerned so far everybody is fine everybody is understanding what we are doing the very very basic stuff is clear in everybody's minds theek hai we keep adding on to this knowledge as we go along right so how do i go about X, how do i go about distinguishing ct and mr is what we learn next but before that something very basic that i want clear in everyone's mind what is right what is left so remember always imagine whenever i am showing you this image always imagine that this this is a person jo aapke samne khada hai so that will make this what that will make this right that will make this left easy what about mr will it change nope nothing will change this will be right this will be left what about x ray even though it is a 2d investigation will right left change nay no, still not change so here this is right this is left so is our right left clear for everything ultrasound i can't write the same because ultrasound may it will depend ki probe kaise rakha hai so remember ultrasound nobody will ask you right left but x ray ct mr are we all clear how to recognize right and left it is ulta it is just ulta from me it is like a person who standing opposite to me so far so good everybody nobody is mistaking right left because from now on i will ask you questions about right left and nobody is getting them wrong okay clear yes everybody with me so far yeah cool so this is right and left now we go about a few terminologies i want to sound very fancy like a radiologist and use these fancy terms ultimately what is radiology black white and everything that comes in between correct so now how do i express it in terms i can't use the word like layman ki black hai white hai i can't use that i need to sound fancy like a doctor so that is why we have made these terms ultimately to yahi bol rahe hain kya black hai kya white hai but in complicated terms okay so let's make sense out of this so whenever i have an x ray and i see something is black what is the term i will use something which is black lucent i will use the term that i am seeing a lucency something is very very lucent when i see something is very white on an x ray what is the term i will use anything that you see white not transparent opaque right so anything which is white on an x ray i will say that it is radio opaque or i will say if it is black radio lucent so opaque or lucent theek hai now everything is very easy so x ray was 2d मैंने अलग नाम दिया था सी टी एम आर अल्ट्रासाउंड ऑल विल बी हाइपो हाइपर बट द सफिक्स विल चेंज वॉट डू आई मीन वेन आई से समथिंग इज ब्लैक आई विल राइट हाइपो एवरीवेयर आई विल राइट हाइपो 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 इफ समथिंग इज वाइट वॉट विल आई राइट आई विल राइट इट इज हाइपर बट द काइंड ऑफ सफिक्स आई यूज विल चेंज डिपेंडिंग ऑन द इन्वेस्टिगेशन सो इफ आई एम सेंग समिंग इज ब्लैक ऑन अ सी टी वॉट सफिक्स शुड आई यूज what suffix should i use i should use the suffix dense so if i see a black lesion on a ct instead of saying are ye kala hai ct pe i will write it is hypo dense similarly if it is white on ct i will write hyper dense theek hai same mri mein kya suffix laga denge hypo hyper remain the same i will use the suffix intense so yahan pe kya kar denge hypo intense yahan pe kar denge hyper intense easy peasy then ultrasound mein kya karenge we will just add it ecogenic or right? we will use the term ecogenic so what will i say basically instead of writing ecogenic i can also write echoic so i can write hypoechoic hyper echoic theek hai easy so let me ask you a question if i am doing an ultrasound and i find a very very uh, black color ka lesion what will i use what term will i call this hypoechoic hyperechoic uh, hypodens hyperdens lucent opaque so kala hai matlab hypo hai ultrasound hai matlab sound waves echoes so i will use the term hypoechoic everybody agrees okay so this is when something is black what if i want to make it slightly more complicated for you if there is a pitch black lesion 
मतलब हाइपो तो काला का शेड हो सकता है व्हाट इफ आई एम टेलिंग यू जेट ब्लैक बिल्कुल ही ब्लैक है सो फॉर अल्ट्रासाउंड वी हैव एडेड वन मोर टर्म व्हेन इट इज जेट ब्लैक नो पिच डार्क देन आई कैन कॉल इट इको ही नहीं है एन इकोइक ओके सो हियर आई विल जस्ट रिमेंबर दैट देयर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एन इकोइक बट रिमेंबर देयर इज नो एन इंटेंस देयर इज नो एन डेंस ओके इट इज जस्ट फॉर अल्ट्रासाउंड दैट आई हैव केप्ट दिस एन इकोइक हियर ओनली आई विल लाइक टू टेल यू ऑल्दो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस न्यूरो बट हियर ओनली आई वांट टू टेल यू ये नाम ना हमने एक ही चीज के लिए रिजर्व किया है व्हिच इज स्पेशल अल्ट्रासाउंड स्पेशल व्हाट इज दैट व्हाट इज एन इकोइक व्हाट इज पिच ब्लैक ऑन अल्ट्रासाउंड और पिच डार्क ऑन अल्ट्रासाउंड इट इज pani it is fluid it is not air it is fluid remember so anything to do with fluid i will remember from today onwards that my answer is going to be ultrasound if they are asking me who will detect minimal pleural effusion who will detect minimal uh, ascites both are fluid who will detect a cyst what is a cyst it is a pani ka gola so anything fluid they ask me i know that fluid ka ultrasound pe special color hai which i have given a special name which is an equic pitch dark so that is why all of these answers are going to be what all of these answers related to fluid and its diagnosis are going to be ultrasound so far so good everybody understood the names so from now when i ask you questions are we going to sound fancy and use all of these fancy terms yes theek hai wonderful so terminologies are done right left is done so our basics are now sorted now we add up to this now we go on with the first thing which is neuro now we are going into the brain okay now we are not coming out of brain now we are not going into ultrasound and everything now our attention is going to be ct mr so which is ct which is mr that is what is my first question so what do i look at to decide so remember what i look at is the bone i look at the bone what is the outermost part of our skull first we have some scalp and then i have the bone correct so here when i see this very very white color ka structure here what is this very very white color ka structure this is our bone so remember one thing here what is uh, how is the uh, bone on a ct the ct on ct the bone will be white okay that is our first learning point that when i see a bone which is white it has to be ct that is going to be my starting point whether i give you ct of chest abdomen uh, skull yes very good kd so kd is saying it is hyperdense perfect so our hyperdensity on the ct is going to be bone is my first thing can i also extrapolate and say that because bone mein calcium hota hai any other calcification will also be white can i make that generalization yes so what did we learn that anything calcium whether it's bone or it's any other calcification i will see it as as a white spot on ct ye sab khush hai is baat se now let's see how the bone appears on mr so if i ask you what is this what is this white color ka rim that i am showing you outside is this white color ka rim the bone no not really so this is not the bone this is actually the scalp fat that i have okay but when i go beneath that white layer when i go into this black thing what is this black thing if i had to draw it here also what is this black thing that i am drawing out here that is the bone right this is the are this is the bone that i am having here okay so one difference how do i start off saying whether it's a ct or it's an mr i look at the bone okay if the bone is white or hyperdense i say that it is ct if the bone is black or hypo intense it is mri everybody agrees with this so we will not confuse by seeing ki ye fat hai yahi bone hai ye white hai ye ct hai no 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 look a bit deeper and see then you will find the bone and that will be black okay agreed so how to identify ctmr so every time i show you one image my question to you will be identify the investigation each and every time from today onwards i ask you i want a correct answer whether it's ct or mr we look at the bone we decide theek hai happy all right so now going forward now we have established ki ct hai ya mr hai now mri is not easy mri has various sequences that we need to know so shall we complicate this further shall we go inside mri and understand its sequences and then look at a few pathologies right okay so on mri two basic sequences that we have are the t1 weighted sequence and the t2 weighted sequence okay so now how to go about that 
how to go about that before i go into that first of all can we establish something on both of these images which look the same what was the outer part which is white what was the outer part which is hyper intense that is fat do you all agree ki scalp ka fat hai so what do i notice that although they are two different sequences fat is bright on both do we all agree with that statement that fat is appearing white on both can i say that chahe wo t1 ho ya wo t2 ho फैट तो दोनों में व्हाइट रहेगा ठीक है आई अग्री देन वी गो टू लुक एट द बोन जिससे हम डिसाइड कर रहे थे कि एम आर है सो वेन आई लुक एट द बोन हियर हाउ इज इट इट इज ब्लैक एम आई श्योर दैट दिस इज एम आर एम आई श्योर येस क्योंकि बोन ब्लैक है वॉट अबाउट दिस इमेज इन दिस इमेज ऑल्सो बोन इज ब्लैक दिस इमेज ऑल्सो बोन इज ब्लैक कैन आई बी श्योर दैट दिस इज ऑल्सो एम आर Yes, so both of these are MR images because both of them have bone which is black, and one more thing I noticed, both of them will have fat which is white. Now, where does the difference start? The difference starts in the very very center. If you see, what are these? Anybody from a preliminary knowledge can tell me what are these white white things that I am seeing? What is this normal anatomical structure that I have outlined? Ventricles. These are the lateral ventricles that you have here. What are ventricles made up of? what do the ventricles have they have csf can i say csf is pani only csf is fluid end of the day whether it's csf or whatever it's end of the day pani so if i were to ask you on an unrelated note if i had to do one ultrasound for csf which is pani what is the color i would see what is that special name jo maine fluid ke liye rakha tha on ultrasound kaisa echoic anechoic correct so just to remind you basically that fluid is anechoic okay coming back here coming back to the brain so here i have fluid which is appearing white on one sequence or water which is appearing white on one sequence and one sequence where i have water appearing dark so now how to decide so how to decide will be using the mnemonic world war 2 which means what when the water is white when the water is white what is the sequence it is sequence t making sense so i will always look at the water i will try and find water and if that is white it is a t2 weighted image is this making sense to everybody here so now when i look at the ventricles also on all of these sulcal spaces remember our brain has the sulcal spaces these are the gyri these are the sulci right so in the sulcal spaces also can you see this white white rim that is also the csf only that is also the csf floating in the subarachnoid space correct so anywhere i have water anywhere i have csf that will be white that is end of story for me it is t2 okay now let's look at the other sequence so then what must this be when the fluid is dark t2 ho gaya to kya bach gaya t1 do we all agree that this is a t1 weighted image because water is dark but i want to be doubly sure i want to be doubly sure that this is t1 this is t2 so for that what do i look at i will look at gray matter i will look at white matter when we cut our brain the gray matter is outside white matter is inside all of us agree so this thing outside that you are seeing do you all agree that this is the gray matter this is the gray matter and this thing in the center that i am seeing this is white matter ab apne color ke knowledge se mujhe batao in this t1 weighted gray matter ka color kya hai white matter ka color kya hai is it matching its name is the white matter appearing whiter and gray matter appearing grayer is it matching its name everybody agrees ki isme white matter zyada white lag raha hai sahi hai theek hai so gray matter is gray white matter is white it is matching what it was supposed to match so how did i decide t1 to make sure that one sequence is t1 weighted mri i have checked two things one csf should be what or any fluid should be what it should be black it shouldn't be white if it is white then it becomes t2 end of story world war 2 water is white matlab t2 ho gaya but again i want to be doubly sure it is t1 so i will check gray matter white matter if it is gray matter is gray and white matter is white if it is matching the name that is definitely t1 let's see for t2 if it is ulta let's check confirm karna chahiye ki wo ulta hai t2 ke sath let's see so here when i see the inside ka white matter and i see this outside ka gray matter tell me which is looking brighter which is looking whiter is it the white matter that appears whiter or it's the gray matter which appears whiter yahan pe dekho ye hai gray matter ye hai white matter outside ka zyada white lag raha hai hai na so ulta pad gaya ye to so gray matter 
white matter here i have ultra where white matter appears darker and this appears brighter yes everybody is this convinced through the board everybody is understood how to recognize so my first question to you if i see an image if i see an image and i see that the bone is white what will be the image what will be the image this is my starting point yes it is a ct scan and i know that on ct any calcification will be white any calcification will be white is what my learning point was theek hai ab maine dekha bone is black so now i have to figure out which sequence this is or which investigation this is this is mri in this i have to go deeper and find out the sequence so if i tell you that water is white water is white in the csf what will be the sequence t2 then i tell you water is black and gray matter is gray and white matter is white what is this sequence this is t1 so ye ab abhi tak sabko samajh mein aa gaya because i have more complications to add this is not end of story there is further more complication se payenge aur complications sab log karu complicate or okay so let's see this image now let's see one more image so usse pehle before i show you what this is please tell me what is this sequence what is this sequence the moment i see water is white it is end of story it is end of story right world war 2 t2 weighted mri perfect then if i ask you this then if i ask you this water is black what is black right but water is black here also but they look quite different these two sequences look quite different so now i have one more thing so what do i need to make sure when water is black that white matter is indeed white and gray matter is indeed gray so ye apne naam pe true hai so can i be sure that this is t1 weighted mri everybody can i be sure okay so now let's figure out who this is who this guy is this guy has csf which is black hai na to mujhe lag raha hai ki ye to t1 hona chahiye but then to confirm i started to look at the gray matter white matter junction so what is whiter gray matter is whiter or white matter is whiter here i am finding that gray matter is whiter do you agree ye to ulta pad gaya this is not what i had expected from t1 t1 mein to naam ke sath white matter white hona chahiye tha hai na so then what is this so then what is this if i had to tell you that this is actually a t2 weighted sequence only but what i have done is i have suppressed the csf maine jo bhi pani tha uska usko kill kar diya i have killed the csf i have made it black then can you agree with my statement that yes now it fits it is just like this but with csf which is black so then what is the sequence that i call when i do a t2 weighted minus csf killing the csf this sequence is called flare this is called flare technetium 99 share is something completely different technetium 99 hum padhenge jab hum nuclear medicine padhenge this is mri sequences all right we are into mri technetium 99 bilkul hi dimag se nikal do that will be a nuclear medicine sequence all right not even radiology sequence डिफ्यूजन पे भी आएंगे वन स्टेप एट अ टाइम ओके सो पहले जो जो हो रहा है उसको अच्छे से समझो सब कुछ आएगा डोंट वरी अबाउट इट ओके सो दीज आर योर थ्री सीक्वेंसेस टी वन वेटेड एम आर टी टू वेटेड एम आर फ्लेयर सो वॉट इज फ्लेयर फ्लेयर इज अ टी टू वेटेड सीक्वेंस इन विच आई किल any csf which is there now nobody asked me why are you killing the csf acha bala tha to sahi t2 mein why do you want to kill it any idea why do i want to kill i want to retain a t2 weighted sequence but i want to kill the csf for that i will ask you a question if i want to test any pathology if i want to see any pathology do you all agree that all pathologies will elicit some edema yeah whether it's infarct whether it's a brain tumor whether it's an infection everything in our body which is new our body reacts against it and produces edema everybody agrees with that so if i have to test edema what is edema end of the day if i ask you nature of edema this is also pani only this is also water only yeah it is fluid so then it will be white on which sequence t1 or t2 agar in dono mein se hi puchu t1 mein white hoga t2 mein white hoga t2 mein white hoga do we all agree that i if i want to pick up pathologies if i want to pick up edema t2 is my sequence of choice so i thought to myself ki agar mera kaam khali edema pick karna hai agar pathology pick karna hai 
let me just kill the normal csf so that i am not distracted right so that i it's very easy for me if i see anything white i know that it is pathology right so basically just to make our job easier in order to identify pathologies we have suppressed anything which was, which was physiologically white is this making sense so just to pick up pathologies better remember just to pick up pathologies better we have done this flare sequence where we stop our distraction apne aap ko kyun distract karna so we will kill the csf so that any pathology which is there which is white will stand out okay making sense so far so what have we learned so far if i go back and i ask you what is this investigation i will start seeing the bone bone is white it is ct then i look at this investigation i find that outer fat is white inside bone is black this is mri with sequence of mri now if i have to ask you on this image will you be able to tell me good here csf is white everybody is feeling confident each and every one person so here i am seeing water is white this is no questions asked world war 2 t2 weighted mr then when i give you a uh, image where water is black then i will analyze if the white matter is indeed white it is t1 but if it is ulta if it is ulta where the gray matter is actually whiter that becomes my flare sequence theek hai abhi tak sab kuch clear how to recognize sequences so so much we have done now we will make it easy all right now we learn about anatomy so this is all we had to know as far as mri sequences go now we need to learn about the anatomy because you get at least like if not more one question sure shot matlab abhi jo next 30 minutes mein padhenge usme se ek guaranteed aapka point aapko aaj se mil raha hai if you remember that is till june so you always get one question from neuro radio image they will give you <laughs> so those of you who were stuck at 149 this is your one mark today all right that you are getting extra so this is one question on radiological anatomy that you always always get from the brain okay so now we will color code this we will revise this tomorrow and we will make sure that one mark is in our pocket today only irrespective of other subjects theek hai so ready to take that one mark in the pocket before that tell me what is this sequence what is this investigation what is the sequence <coughs> mri t2 yes hai na theek hai so this is our water is white and we have the bone bone which is black so this we are all agreeing on the same page that this is a t2 weighted mri yes all of us agree with this statement cool so now let's understand the cross sectional anatomy so first of all if i ask you what is this top most red arrow marking what are these white color ke ventricles lateral ventricle can you give me a much more uh, precise answer which horn of lateral ventricle so this is anterior this is posterior this side this is right cortex or left cortex if i have to ask you this this is right side or left side first of all राइट गुड वॉट इज दिस साइड ऑफ द ब्रेन वॉट इज दिस साइड ऑफ द ब्रेन लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ द ब्रेन ठीक है इसमें हमें कोई डाउट नहीं है ओके सो नाव यू वर करेक्ट वेन यू सेट लेटर वेंट्रिकल इफ आई आस्क यू विच हॉर्न फ्रंटल हॉर्न ऑक्सीपिटल हॉर्न टेम्पोरल हॉर्न विच हॉर्न ऑफ फ्रंटल ऑफ लेटर वेंट्रिकल दिस इज सो आगे की तरफ है राइट सो दिस इज द इंटीरियर हॉर्न सो दिस विल बी द फ्रंटल हॉर्न ऑफ लेटरल वेंट्रिकल राइट सो दीज आर योर लेटरल वेंट्रिकल्स के हॉर्न सो नाव हियर छोटा वाला पीछे वाला रेड एरो वॉट हॉर्न ऑफ लेटरल वेंट्रिकल अगेन आई नो इट इज लेटरल वेंट्रिकल बट विच हॉर्न ऑक्सीपिटल हॉर्न राइट पोस्टीरियर मीन्स ऑक्सीपिटल सो दिस इज आर ऑक्सीपिटल हॉर्न और पोस्टीरियर हॉर्न ऑफ लेटरल वेंट्रिकल फेर इनफ देन वेन आई आस्क यू वॉट इज दिस ब्लू एरो वॉट इज दिस ब्लू एरो इफ दिस इज द लेटरल वेंट्रिकल एंड इट हैज टू गो डाउन it will go down through which ventricle and then open into the fourth ventricle this is the third ventricle all right so whenever you see a slit like ventricle in the midline this will be what this blue arrow will be your third ventricle remember okay so this is your blue arrow showing third ventricle now one minute what is that structure which connects the lateral ventricle to the third ventricle what is that foramen called in between the two what is that foramen in between which connects the frontal uh, or the lateral ventricle with the third ventricle aqueduct of sylvius wo to niche aayega wo to third or fourth ko connect karega foramen of monroe 
right? So remember, where will I see foramen of Monroe? If this is the lateral ventricle and this is the third ventricle, can I say this tiny little guy here, this tiny little foramen here is foramen of Monroe? Will you all agree with that statement? Lateral ventricle, third ventricle, in between foramen of Monroe. So can I write here, Chotusa, foramen of Monroe? Is that fine? Everybody agrees? All right. One more addition to this now. What is the structure which pairs the third ventricle on both sides? If I have to ask you what forms the lateral margin of the third ventricle, what are these two nuclei on both sides of the third ventricle marked by the green arrow? Correct. These are your thalami. This is your thalamus. So this side, which thalamus has been marked by the green arrow? Right thalamus, left thalamus left thalamus okay and this is the right thalamus all right so far so good now we have a few more basal ganglia that we need to know what is this basal ganglia which is in contact with the lateral ventricle frontal horn what is this that i am marking out with the white arrow correct this is the caudate nucleus head of caudate to be more precise so this is caudate nucleus then you have something which is quite looking like a lens which is quite looking like a lens so what is it that is marked by the yellow arrow not the internal capsule still in the basal ganglia lentiform nucleus lentiform nucleus lentiform nucleus is made up of two things what are the two things outer outer putamen and inner, what do I have? Inner, I have globus pallidus. Okay, everybody agrees. So this is your caudate, this lentiform nucleus made up of putamen and globus pallidus. And in the midline, just lateral to the vent, third ventricle, I have the thalamus. Is this clear? One question, sure, short from this. Okay, so these are your basal ganglia. All right, everybody understanding? Now you guys tell me the answer. So first topmost red arrow, topmost red arrow showing me what? Everybody has to answer now. Which horn of lateral ventricle? Yes, frontal horn of lateral ventricle. What about this chotu piche ka arrow? Piche ka lateral ventricle kaun sa horn rega? Yes, occipital horn of lateral ventricle. ठीक है, wonderful. What is the white arrow showing me? What is the white arrow showing me near the lateral ventricle? Caudate, caudate nucleus. Perfect. What is the yellow arrow showing me? Yellow shaped like a lens. Lentiform nucleus. Perfect. Made up of what two things? Outer, outer putamen, inner globus pallidus. One question for you here. Which is the most common site of bleed in elderly because of hypertension? One one-liner question for you. Most common site of hypertensive bleed. You must have seen in a lot of uh, known people or patients that they have this sudden hypertensive bleed inside the brain. And remember, the most common site or for your entrance only, most common site for hypertensive bleed is this putamen here. Okay? Fair enough, right. Green wala regia around the third ventricle. What is the uh, basal ganglia nucleus that is around the third ventricle? This will be thalamus. This will be thalamus. And what is this marked by the blue arrow in the midline? That is our third ventricle. And then when I ask you what connects the lateral ventricle to the third ventricle, what will we say now? Will we say aqueduct of Sylvius? No, no, no. We will say foramen of Monroe. Okay, is this section clear to each and every one of you? Now, one question, one more question from anatomy only. So this is caudate, this is lentiform. Now, if I notice very, very carefully, you know, I am seeing that there is one white matter bundle which is going like this between the three things that I have just studied. So if I had to draw out the caudate, the lentiform, the thalamus, there is one capsule which is growing like this, this anterior limb rehega ye posterior limb rahega, and then I have genu. So what is this white matter bundle going like this? Yes, it will be internal capsule. Is this clear everybody? So if I have to draw here, if I have to draw here, this will be my internal capsule. Is this clear? 
anatomy making some more sense here now one of you had asked what is the investigation of choice for hypertensive bleed very very important question but that requires some more explanation so before i go into that tell me on ct on a ct scan what is the thing we already know is white which will be bright or in a fancy way hyper dense what are the things on ct that i already know which doesn't require any prior knowledge what i have to told you today ki wo white rahega that is how my process was starting that is how i was recognizing that it's a ct bone or on if i have to see at a molecular level what is white bone ya fir calcium hai na to ye hame already pata hai that these two things will appear very very white further adding on to this knowledge we also have acute hemorrhage means that hemorrhage which has happened in less than 24 hours or less than 7 days okay fresh blood abhi abhi bleeding hua hai acute hemorrhage will also be white on ct theek hai can we add that to our knowledge that bone and calcium was white acute hemorrhage is also white okay so three things one more thing i want to tell you i am extrinsically adding something मैं कॉन्ट्रास्ट डाल दी हूँ ब्लड वेसल में जिसे कि ब्लड वेसल्स भी अलग से दिख जाए सो कैन आई से दैट व्हेन आई इंजेक्ट आयोडिनेटेड कॉन्ट्रास्ट दैट इज आल्सो व्हाइट यस सो फॉर सीटी रिमेंबर आई यूज आयोडिनेटेड कॉन्ट्रास्ट कॉन्ट्रास्ट विथ आयोडीन सो दैट इज ऑल्सो व्हाइट ऑन अ सीटी स्कैन इज दिस मेकिंग सेंस सो दीज आर ऑल द थिंग्स विच विल बी व्हाइट सो नाउ हु एवर है क्वेश्चन वेन आई आस्क यू what is the investigation of choice to look for acute hemorrhage to look for acute hemorrhage what will you tell me you will tell me ct kyunki ct mein ye white dikh raha hai i already know okay one extra question will you give contrast you will not give contrast non contrast ct contrast enhanced ct so now if i do give contrast usse kya ho jayega उससे ये कॉन्ट्रास्ट भी व्हाइट लगेगा हिमरेज भी व्हाइट लगेगा वॉट विल हैपन वी विल ओनली गेट कन्फ्यूज खुद को कन्फ्यूज करना है नहीं करना नहीं करना राइट वाई अननेसेसरी कन्फ्यूज दिस इज ऑलरेडी व्हाइट दिस इज एनी वे स्टैंडिंग आउट सो नो नीड ऑफ कॉन्ट्रास्ट करेक्ट सो रिमेंबर इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस फॉर अक्यूट हिमरेज नॉन कॉन्ट्रास्ट सिटी सिमिलर कॉन्सेप्ट इफ आई आस्क यू इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस टू लुक फॉर कैल्सिफिकेशन to look for intracranial calcification i want to see a calcific lesion tell me what will be the answer is that also white yes do i need to give contrast no anyways wo white hai so can i still say that this will be the answer yes all of these concepts are going to be very very important okay this will make your life very simple towards the end so please pay attention okay so this is bone this is calcification this is acute hemorrhage all of these things are white so when to do when to give contrast all right so in general remember any time i want to see a tumor or i want to see an infection i will give contrast if it is intrinsically white if it is anyways going to be white no need to give contrast so is this clear so now when i ask you investigation of choice to look for hypertensive bleeding will you be able to tell me the answer hypertensive acute bleed yes ncct and if i ask you one follow up question what will be the most common site where i would expect to find this white white bleeding that answer i already know what was that putamen not internal capsule putamen okay so this is so many of our questions getting answered right so this is your hypertensive bleed so wapis shall we go back to anatomy now having gained one more concept here so now let's go back to anatomy but this section is clear to each one of us if this question comes in exam none of us are getting it wrong yeah all right going ahead one level below it or before that same level on a different sequence so here if i ask you which sequence this is first of all bone is black so ct or mr ct or mr it is mri so now my question is t1 t2 or flare three options i have so i check that water is black so it can't be t2 it can be t1 or it can be flare so then how to distinguish gray matter white matter what is looking whiter white matter is whiter so when it sticks to its name what is the sequence it is t1 weighted image right understanding guys so this is your t1 weighted mr very nice everybody has given me a correct answer i am very very happy and relieved okay so now again 
what is this anterior part of the basal ganglia which is near the frontal horn what should i name this correct perfect caudate nucleus what is this nucleus here shaped like a lens reminding me of a lens lenticular nucleus made up of outer putamen inner globus pallidus so this is your lenticular nucleus or lentiform nucleus what is this that is shaped here just near the third ventricle bordering the third ventricle what is this this is the thalamus this is the thalamus theek hai understood so far so good shall i complicate things a bit here only so now that this is white matter now that this is t1 i can see that the white matter is so white so now when i ask you what is this white matter bundle which is going here this is the internal capsule right everybody can make it out that this here this sequence here it's the internal capsule okay let's further add on to this let's further add on to this if this was the lentiform nucleus can you also notice one more white matter bundle going here one more white matter bundle going here so what is that bundle which is going outside the lentiform nucleus if this is the lentiform nucleus what goes outside the lentiform nucleus yes very good so if this is l this white matter bundle what should i label it as external capsule yes this is external capsule cool then if i notice further more carefully i am seeing that there is some gray matter here there is some gray matter in the outermost part what is this part of the gray matter what is this cortex called anybody so iske liye thoda sa explanation lagega right iske liye thoda sa explanation lagega so let's see before i ask you about the cortex tell me what is this cistern called this is one cistern here which is like a bat wing what is this cistern yes this is the sylvian cistern this is the sylvian cistern one important content of this cistern you can tell me one major major artery jiske bina hum jee nahi sakte what is that artery which runs here yes you have your mca so remember middle cerebral artery runs here in the sylvian cistern have we learned this now now the cortex the gray matter which borders the sylvian cistern that is called as the insular cortex remember this is your insular cortex theek hai adding on to our knowledge so basal ganglia done internal capsule done external capsule done then i have the sylvian cistern and i have the insular cortex most literally one content of sylvian cistern mca theek hai so basal ganglia level is sorted for everybody shall we go down to what level now now we go to the niche ka level niche ka level is what niche ka level is the level of mid brain hai na niche ka level is mid brain so everybody can recognize this panda shaped so the moment you see as a panda jaisa mid brain this is our mid brain ka level so now let's further identify this yes before that we are talking about the sequence what is the sequence that i am showing you here t1 t2 flare yes this is a t2 weighted mr very good everybody this is a t2 weighted mr i am seeing that the water is again quite white hai na so game over t2 weighted mr all right so now let's identify further let's go into the mid brain and try to identify the structures so when i tell you this only there are two green as a green jo mark kar raha hai do aisa panda ki aankhe hai what are these nuclei in the mid brain anybody can tell me what are these nuclei in the mid brain they are named after a color kisi to color ke piche naam hai what are these nuclei red nucleus hai na so this is your red nucleus in the mid brain okay something else also i am seeing something else kala kala also aage it is running marked by the blue arrow what is that kala kala structure here you have this black colored substance what is this main batati hu uske naam mein hai ki wo kala hai there is some racist word in the name itself yes substantia nigra substantia nigra pathology will point me towards which diagnosis when the substantia nigra doesn't appear so black when the nigration the melanin which was supposed to make it black hi nahi bana what is that disease correct parkinsonism so if they mark an arrow here and ask you what is the disease where this structure marked by the arrow is absent what will you say you will say that yes i know it is parkinson's disease where substantia nigra gets affected is this making sense 
Okay, then let's look at the yellow arrow. There is one chotusa hole where you have some fluid. So what is this structure now? Not pineal gland. It is a CSF containing structure. So what is the tiny CSF structure which is passing through the midbrain? Yes, it is aqueduct of sylvius. Aqueduct of sylvius. Remember aqueduct of sylvius? So when we had the two lateral ventricles, they were getting communicated with the third ventricle. Via what? Via what structure in that midline I was showing you? Foramen of Monroe. So, up, yahan tak to ho gaya. Up, third ventricle wants to communicate with the fourth ventricle, right? So, how will they communicate? They will communicate via this tiny little foramina in the midbrain, which is our aqueduct of sylvius. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, this is basically your T2 weighted MRI, your anatomy of midbrain. Thikha? Is this fine? Everybody, so this is your level of midbrain. Okay, understood? Aage bade. So this level is sorted. So basal ganglia is sorted, midbrain is sorted. If you have ever done previous year questions, you would notice ki bahut sare sawal in Hindu level mein se aapko aaye hain. Right? So always remember a panda and yes, you will remember this level. Hai na? Thik hai. Aage bade fir? Okay. <laughs> 149. Yes. So now we are crossing over slowly but surely to the uh, finish line. So now what is the level? What is the brain stem structure below midbrain that I'm showing you here marked with yellow? Pons. Pons bach gaya. Midbrain ho gaya. pons pe pochonge. Correct. But how do I make sure that this is indeed pons? So isko sure karne ke liye na ki confirm ki wo ek number mera hi hai. It is indeed pons. I have to look aage of pons. I have to look piche at pons. Okay. Pons ke aage dekh lo. Pons ke piche dekh lo. Dono jaga pe ek ek cheez honi chahiye. So aage kya dikh raha hai? Aage kala gola dikh raha hai sabko. One black color ka dot. Ye dekhne ke liye. Ye samjane ke liye. I'll have to give you one more concept. So on MRI. What was that one thing which was appearing black on everything? Just say, we identify that it is MRI. That we always see color. Whether it's T1, whether it's T2, it is going to be black. And that is how I know it's not CT and it's MR. What was that? What was our starting point? That when it was color, it was bone. Correct. Bone ka cortex. Everybody agrees. So, if cortex is black, I know that it is MRI. So, it will always be black. There is one more structure which is always black. That is your blood vessel that is your flow void or your blood vessel now why is a blood vessel always black because how is our mri functioning so for that thoda sa concept okay thoda sa concept here so mri ke signal how is mri image formed we are not giving any x-ray what are we doing if this is a large magnet have you ever undergone an MRI or seen an MRI machine? Thak, 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 zor, zor ki irritating awaz aati hai. Hai na? So that is basically your MRI ka magnet which is functioning. Inside that you place the person. Inside the magnet you are <laughs> placing one person. Now this person has what inside him? This person has a lot of protons. Everywhere we go we have water, we have protons. Right? In every substance of our body it's made up of protons. So what will happen is basically whenever I place this person with a lot of protons, all of these protons of the body which are all actually spinning elect uh, spinning uh, particles, right? spinning charges basically, they will all get aligned. They will all be like are, are magnet I, we have to behave ourselves. So all of them will align in one particular line. When all the magnets, when all the protons of our body align in one line, that will produce a signal. That is what is produces an MRI signal. Now, if I tell you, what happens inside blood vessel? If this is a blood vessel, do you all agree? We have RBCs, we have blood which is moving very, very fast in the artery. Do you all agree with that? All the blood vessel is moving so fast. So when I do this MRI sequence and I place this person in the magnet, the blood is still moving pretty, pretty quickly. So what will happen? Will this blood vessel ever be uh, able to produce any signal? No, because of such fast moving blood, no, usme koi signal bani nahi pata bichara. All right, that is why your blood vessels will always appear black, while other guys which are static, no, they will produce all of their black, white, gray, everything. But bichara blood vessel, because blood is moving so quickly, will never be able to generate any signal, and that is why that is called what? That is called a flow void. 
what do you mean by void the void that is there in our life in our hearts how do we fill it with food right so here similarly you have this void which is kala void and that is because of blood flow okay so this is your flow void here on the other hand what about cortex nobody question me ki cortex ke sath kya ho raha tha wo to flow hi nahi ho raha cortex has so much calcium and so much uh, mineral which is packed into it that it is very tightly packed it doesn't generate any signal okay because of very very tightly packed calcium it also doesn't have a lot of protons so it will also appear black theek hai fair enough understood so now any time i see a round black structure on mri will you all be able to tell me that this is a flow void this is a blood vessel which is black right okay so now How we were at pons कि कैसे कंफर्म करे कि ये पॉन्स है उसके आगे देखना है उसके पीछे देखना है राइट right? सो so, अब मैं जब पॉन्स के आगे देखू एंड आई आस्क यू दैट वॉट इज दिस सी एस एफ सिस्टर्न इंटीरियर टू पॉन्स इट वॉन्ट बी रॉकेट साइंस इफ आई टेल यू इट्स नेम इज प्री पॉन्टाइन सिस्टर्न यस विल इट बी इजी टू रिमेंबर नो जोर पे दिमाग आई मीन दिमाग पे जोर सो पॉन्स के आगे है प्री पॉन्टाइन सिस्टर नाउ माई क्वेश्चन टू यू विच इज दिस ब्लड वेसल विच इज रनिंग इन द प्री पॉन्टाइन सिस्टर वॉट विल योर आंसर बी अनाटमी क्वेश्चन रेडियोलॉजी क्वेश्चन वॉट एवर क्वेश्चन वी वॉन्ट दी आंसर राइट इट इज द बेजिलर आर्टरी इट इज द बेजिलर आर्टरी सो माई लर्निंग पॉइंट pons first thing i'm going to identify anterior to pons in the pre pontine cistern one black color ka flow white should be running that flow white is basilar artery if i see that i'm very happy then i come back and see that there is one diamond shaped ventricle there is one diamond shaped csf collection what csf is left we had done lateral ventricle we had done foramen of monroe we have done third ventricle we have done aqueduct of sylvius what is left we are into the fourth ventricle we are into the end game now right so this is our fourth ventricle here so now will everybody be able to identify pons aage confirm karna hai basilar artery piche confirm karna hai diamond shaped fourth ventricle and then i know that this indeed is my pons here yes everybody with me so far understanding what we are talking about okay तो फिर थोड़ा और पीछे जाते हैं लेट्स गो बिहाइंड द पॉन्स अ बिट मोर व्हाट आर दिस व्हाट इज दिस हेमिस्फीयर वन मोर पार्ट ऑफ द ब्रेन स्टेम बिहाइंड द पॉन्स बिहाइंड द ब्रेन स्टेम सेरिबेलम मेडुला तो नीचे आएगा है ना मेडुला तो पॉन्स के नीचे आएगा पॉन्स मेडुला कैन नेवर बी इन वन सेम एक्सल लेवल सो दिस इज सेरिबेलम दिस इन ग्रीन इज सेरिबेलम and when i ask you what is it that connects the cerebellum in the center what is that hemisphere if these are the cerebellar hemispheres what connects the cerebellum in the center it is vermis right so this is the cerebellar vermis in the center theek hai so far so good pons ka level is sorted for us okay let's fill this again now you guys help me fill this what is the yellow arrow showing yellow arrow i already know easy it is pons what is the blue arrow showing what is the blue arrow showing pons ke piche which ventricle fourth ventricle pons ke aage which artery pre pontine cistern which artery runs basilar artery runs very good connecting the two cerebellar hemispheres in the center with red cerebellar vermis the two lateral parts of the cerebellum cerebellar hemisphere okay tell me so this one right cerebellar hemisphere left cerebellar hemisphere right okay wonderful so this is a right cerebellar hemisphere right here okay cool acha ye batao ye aage kya hai what are these structures what are these these are our aankhe these are the eyes correct so you can see that these are the eyes and then you have the we will talk about this so this is the eyeball basically okay ठीक है आगे बढ़े गोइंग टू वन इंफीरियर मोस्ट सेक्शन सो क्या रह गया अब व्हाट इज लेफ्ट इन द ब्रेन स्टेम सबसे नीचे इफ आई गो मेड्यूला करेक्ट सो दिस इज आर मेड्यूला ऑब्लोंगेटा दिस इज आर मेड्यूला इन द सेंटर एंड देन व्हाट डू आई सी वर्मिस इज ओवर आई सी दैट अगेन आई एम जस्ट सीइंग द हेमिस्फीयर राइट सो दिस इज द सेरिबेलर हेमिस्फीयर बट योर जॉब विल बी टू टेल मी वेदर इट्स द राइट सेरिबेलर हेमिस्फीयर और इट्स द लेफ्ट सेरिबेलर हेमिस्फीयर left cerebellar hemisphere yes 
Okay, wonderful. One more thing. What is that inferior most part of the cerebellum, which is something that is like my throat, which also looks something like my throat. These are the cerebellar tonsils. Are these important for us? Are these cerebellar tonsils important? What if they go down? If there is raised intracranial pressure and the tonsils herniate inferiorly, will we survive? We won't survive. So remember, tonsillar herniation, very, very bad. Okay. And yes, as Rijol is very nicely telling me, there is one congenital variation. We will not go into it, but there is one congenital anomaly where tonsil ectopically only is down. All right. Bachpan se hi wo niche hai. Usko bolte hai, kyari malformation. Okay. So remember, tonsil down, kyari malformation. Thik hai? But very important tonsil, respiratory centers there, it can't come down. This is very, very vital to us. Okay. So far, so good. Everybody, you have lasted for one hour. So congratulations on that. Uh, so this is it for today. All right. So if this amount of time is fine for you, we can go ahead with one hour or we can do two hours also. So how do you want to move ahead uh, from the next class? We won't have two hours, but from now on, can you bear with me for two hours? Will that work? Yeah. Or you want to keep it short, one hour? Two hours is fine. Or one hour. One hour daily to ho paega. Weekend we will have the classes. So weekend, matlab, aapko total 4 ghante dene hai ya phir 2 ghante dene hai. 2 hours each. 2 hours each works. Alright, cool. So then I will uh, meet you all this Saturday then. Saturday, Sunday. We will continue from this point. Everything is fine. You guys are understanding things. That is the most important. So this will be the pace. Okay, we will guarantee questions every time. Ki ek ek point to hamara ban raha hai. Aaj ka ek point ban gaya hai. We will get definite one question from basal ganglia from midbrain. All right, so that is in everybody's pocket. So what is your duty, guys, is before you come for the next class, like before you meet me on Saturday again, you have to revise this. Okay. Yes, radio puri kara dungi. Agar aap log chahoge, to we will continue like this. Otherwise, we'll stop midway and we'll decide something else. Okay. So that is, this is how we'll be proceeding from now on. You have to revise and come what we have done in last class. So this chotu sa PDF that you have gotten today, you have to revise. And then in the beginning, I'll ask you a few questions and then I want 100% on the board to answer. Okay. Agar tab sahi jawab nahi mila, then I will not teach anymore. Okay. So that is what is your promise to me all right next we are meeting on saturday so saturday 10 pm i will see you all saturday night if there's any change sometimes like uh, time might go here and there but saturday sunday we will be having classes ya to sham ko rahegi ya raat ko rahegi theek hai all right guys okay then good night and uh, have a good remaining sunday and uh, good night bye Next class is also free. All of these are free special classes. All right. So just uh, keep attending. You don't have to pay anything. I mean, you are getting the complete syllabus coverage. So like what more can you ask for? Right. Okay. Chalo, bye.